joined by two talented writers, Banafshe Sarov and Suzanne Leal. Now, yeah. Suzanne, you might remember, she joined us a little while ago. I so, did. Suzanne is a repeat, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> now, tonight we are chatting about in Columbia University, <laughs> and hello to those watching. Um, and you need to be an American citizen to actually win a Pulitzer Prize mm -hmm. for yeah. fiction. Um, and she married an American and she's got dual citizen citizenship. Mm -hmm. So in 2006, you know, she, uh, she won the award for March and I think deservedly so. But anyway, what I also want to share with you is whilst I was at Pulitzer Prizes in the US, they gave me these beautiful bookmarks, mm -hmm. the Pulitzer Prizes 100 years this year. It's their birthday, so happy birthday. I've got 10 of these to give away. So tonight I'm going to choose, or the panel's going to choose, 10 of the most interesting questions that we get, and those people will get a free bookmark. So there you go. Now, this is Geraldine's, well, she's written five <coughs> fiction novels, is yeah. that right? Mm -hmm. And two non-fiction. Um, her most secret, her most recent book has been The Secret Chord, but you might know Caleb's Crossing, Year of Wonders and Nine Parts of Desire, and, and there are several others. Now, over to Suzanne, tell us what this is about. Oh, this is a great book. So this is the story of John March, and for those people who love Little Women, John March will be a familiar yet slightly absent figure for them. Mm -hmm. John March is the husband of Mami from Little Woman, Women, so of course the father of Joe, of Meg, of Beth and of Amy. And this story is the story of his absence for a year. What he does is he goes to become a chaplain for the Union troops during the American Civil War and he spends a year away. This is his year. It's not only his wartime story though, it has a series of flashbacks which describe his courtship with the perhaps not so pristine and not so smarmy mommy and also his love for a slave called Grace. It's, uh, it's extraordinary. You loved it, didn't yeah, you? I really loved it. That, I really well, did. So, Benafshe, let's start with you in terms of overall opinion. Uh, well, you know, you've chosen the right person to bring tonight because I absolutely adore Geraldine Brooks. Um, I <laughs> Sorry, what was Make that? sure you're projecting. Oh, I so absolutely good. adored Geraldine Brooks, just saying a second time. A Year of Wonders took, simply took my breath away and with this, I had not read The Little Women, so I came from this from a bit of a blind spot and um, I was completely taken away by it. I mean, I read this when it first came out, a bookseller, and I got the proof copy for it and I was... Uh, I, I just simply, I loved it, loved it, loved it. And, and I recommended it so heartily and it was in my best selling, it was in my um, uh, recommended um, staff books forever. <laughs> now, I could, uh, you might not be able to see this, but I'm going to show you Benafshe's <laughs> copy. She's actually gone to the local library and borrowed it. So yep. for all of, you, all of our libraries out there and our library um, viewers and, uh, you know, get the book any way you can. Go to a library buy yourself a copy um, and make sure you read it and we don't mind whether you read it on ebooks whether you read it in audio just read it okay so I've got to say I adored it I I my favorite so far has been Caleb's Crossing mm -hmm. I really love that book and I know that it's not her most popular but I got to tell you I enjoyed and devoured every minute of March she is it's historical fiction she gets the history right, she gets the voice right, she gets the mm. language right. And, you know, I, I devoured it. I, I love the story, I love the language, I love the rhythm. And, you know, I don't know, I just I was felt very, very sad when I finished it. I love how she writes in the first person. Yeah. So you feel like you're right there with the character yeah. and you're walking in their shoes and you feel very close to them. You really do. And in the present tense. Yeah, she's really, she's a great writer. I mean, she's obviously a very accomplished researcher as well because mm. she does a lot of work before she starts writing, I'd imagine. Now, I'm really hoping that Geraldine Brooks is joining us tonight. I know Pulitzer <laughs> Prize is joining us tonight. Now, bear with them, though, because it's actually 6 a.m. on the east coast of America, <laughs> which is where start, they, is it it's an early start, which is where they <laughs> both morning. are. But we're here tonight and we're here live and we're here to take your comments or your questions. So if you've got a question, all you need to do is type it into the comments and we will take it and we will try to answer your question. So I'll start with some, some talking points. So 
it's set, you know, as you were saying, Suzanne, in the uh, the American Civil War, and Mr. March actually goes off to war. Um, how convincing did you think that that was? I think the I, I'm not an historian. I'm not well versed in the American Civil War. But it struck me as very credible and very true to life. Mm. Um, John March, or Captain March, comes to uh, his post as a chaplain. Uh, I wasn't as convinced by his role as a chaplain. He seemed more to me a more natural teacher rather than a religious mm. man. And it's not really a book that grapples with the faith or the Christian faith of a tra chaplain, but rather it grapples with the moral dilemma of, or dilemmas of a good man put in difficult circumstances. I think perhaps the most moving part of the description of the conflict is just how bloody it was. I mean, Martin, and violent and brutal. Violent, yeah. And so terribly distressing in parts. I mean, she does that well. And it was interesting how she opened up with that, and like opened mm. the story mm. with um, um, the, some of the soldiers trying to get the, a dead from the, uh, out of the river, and then um, he remembered a, a previous episode mm. with the um, with the cannons going off, and like they're jumping into the water, and a lot of them drowning. Yeah. I thought it was a very dramatic, swim. dramatic uh, opening. Yeah. But what she does very cleverly is to juxtapose the violence and the horror and the goriness of the conflict with the very clean held back letters that John yeah. March writes to Mami. So what you get is this sanitised view of the war as written to Mami, and yet because you're seeing it mm. from the perspective of Captain March for most of the book, you're right down dirty. And so questions of honesty come up and what are letters meant to do? Are they meant to comfort? Are they meant mm. to give, to bear witness to what's happening? I think she does that beautifully. And how... What is the role of letters in a marriage where there is absence? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was interesting how uh, Mami, towards the end, feels quite betrayed by that, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah. She feels that he's actually lied to her. She could forgive quite a bit, but she couldn't forgive him yeah. lying to her and yeah. the deceit of um, the, the, what he held back from telling mm. her the truth. Yeah. But what would you do? What would you do if you're at home with four girls, you can't help, and you realise that your husband's in mortal danger, yeah. and... All you can do is read about it, but you can't help. Yeah. Um, is honesty the most important thing? Well, well yeah. yeah. Sorry, I don't remember. Go on, you go. Um, I think that he misread Mami. I, I think yeah, that, I, yeah, yeah, Mami would have, um, was a type of person that would have wanted to know that and to, um, to be able to empathise with what he's going through rather than mm. have, as you said, this sanitised vision of what, A, the war was like and, um, and B, as to what his experiences are, I think she felt very betrayed. But, uh, I think she did. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe okay. But let's not go. Yeah, yeah. Skip to the end. I'm going to take. I've got some questions here. Um, Marie says the main characters were well developed, although a depressing subject. I loved it. I guess the question here is: Did you find the content depressing? How did you feel while reading the book? I mean, it was the subject matter was depressing, but I actually didn't feel that the book was depressing. No, not at all. I didn't feel that it was depressing. Did you? The book. I, I felt it was very sad. Yeah. Um, there were times where I felt very anguished by the loss that particularly the slaves were experiencing oh, as terrible. losing children, losing terrible. family members. But I think the joy of this book or the, the great um, talent of this book is that it keeps you thinking about what would I do? Yeah. What If I were in that situation, mm. what moral choices would I make? If I was a good person fighting what I thought was a mm. good war, how would I react when I realised that not everybody is good. The brutality, she didn't shy away from that, did no, she? No, she, she was right very good. straight yeah. into that. Which really shocked. Yeah. You know, come some little women. I'm like, what's happening? Yeah, this is supposed absolutely. to be little women. Okay, we're at the Better Reading Book Club. We're discussing March by Geraldine Brooks. I've got Banafshe Rusarov sitting here and I've got the lovely Suzanne Lille and we're talking, as I said, about March Geraldine Brooks. If you've got any questions, please type them into comments and we'll take them. I think we've got a question now. Uh, Susan Joy asks, what did you think of as March as a character, as the father? Did, like, did we like him? I quite liked him. Oh, I, I think he was very him. idealistic. Oh, really? No, I liked him. I think he was idealistic. He was a man of his time and he really had mm. firm beliefs um, 
even though they're a little bit askew, but um, no, he had firm, and I think... But um, I think, you know, fundamentally, he was, he was trying to do the right thing. Yeah, he yeah. believed in what he was doing, but he was tested. You didn't think that? No, I did at first. So, so <laughs> yeah. again, the talent of the narrative is that most of the book is in John March's voice, yeah. and then it changes to Marmy. And you get a completely different view yeah, of who do. John March yeah. is. And... Yeah, he's a good man, a little bit clumsy, a little bit ill-informed. He makes rash decisions. He doesn't communicate. He expects um, women oh, to be... Oh, I think you're a bit <laughs> harsh, Suzanne. <laughs> but look, I, I understand that he's a good man, but he did start to irritate me in the same way that he irritated Mami. So I, yeah. I was with Mami. As soon as Mami was speaking, I'm thinking, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, right. you're right. was great. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I, was, I was quite surprised when I was starting to read Mami's point of view that... Oh, really? It was a little bit like that um, it, twist of, um, to me, it was a little, not quite as dramatic as Gone Girl, like when she, her point of view came on. It was uh, it was as if, oh, wow, completely different character that I'm reading about. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think as I was reading through, I was with John March, mostly. I mean, you had to make uh, exceptions for the time and yeah. the way he was speaking about his daughters, who he loved, but yeah. the, the role of women. But then when Mami came, and even Mami's thinking this isn't good enough I'm thinking you're right it's, it, it's not good enough all the I time I think war is extenuating circumstances I mean, and I think sometimes we can forgive people and I yeah. think Mami I mean you're sitting on this side of it and she had greater expectations of the man that he was than he actually was it but was I the mean money. How, it was the money. She oh really? the money was terrible <laughs> it was, <laughs> the was giving was away terrible. the family I fortune know. without but telling her without it. even discussing it but I mean, he did it to win her favour he thought that he what he's doing I know just ask her well you know, now alright well let's take another question <laughs> uh, the team of Pulitzer Prizes want to know what you guys think about the loss or alteration of March's idealism oh <sighs> wow mm. That was quite this big, That's a big question. question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, he started um, when he joined the um, Union troops. He tra he had this big idealism of um, you know ending, marching for sort of to end the slavery, and um, and yet he was tested at um, when the Confederate rebels. Um, attacked the plantation he was in where the slaves were and um, and. and I think his humanity came through, his fears came through, and I think that made him test his mor morality and um, as where his belief systems really are. He really struggled with after that, didn't he? Yeah, after he that did. point, yeah. yeah. What what I found interesting was his expectations of himself were so high, and his disappointment and mm. hatred of himself was so great that it could have mired him to become less useful and just more depressed. But don't you think, I, I thought that too, but I think you put men and women in circumstances mm. like that, in horror, mm. in warlike situations where really I think you can't judge people unless you're no. there and you don't know what your reaction is going to be, and what that, your human reaction is going to be. And that's why he needed Mami because yes. in the end he needs Mami to say, you did not cause this war. Yes. You were not responsible for the deaths that this war has caused. You can't solve it. You can do a small thing amongst the place you know best. Yeah, and he did. I think he did that, and he did that to the best of his ability. Yes, and I think mm. that's, in the end, it became a really tight union because she was the pragmatist, mm. which is why he should have asked her about the money. Mm. <laughs> and um, he's the <laughs> idealist, but the combination of the two, where, yes, he can do the right thing, but he can't solve an intractable war. Mm. What he can do is to um, give better enlightenment mm. within but isn't a small it interesting field. That also was Grace who told Mami, "You should, um, if you don't get him out of this, then um, he 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 will never be the man that he was yes. before. He, he will never he will never be able to forgive himself." And great, and yet Ma Mami had seen Grace as someone who had wedged between. Her mm. and her husband, like someone who had... Grace is another love interest in the yeah. book, just in case. Well, for those that haven't read it yet. And Grace is actually a slave that he falls for quite early on yeah, in the book. When he was it's 18, not like he has yeah. a relationship yeah. with her right throughout. I've got um, a question, uh, well, a statement from Chris. I like the idea behind March to take a character from another story and mm. develop that character further. 
Are there any other famous literary <laughs> side characters you'd like to see get their own book? Do you know, I did, when I was researching March by Geraldine Brooks, I did see somebody refer to it as a fan, it, it refer to it as fan fiction, which I actually don't think it is no. at all. I think it's absolutely too fabulous for that. It's well written, well researched, it's standalone, fantastic historical fiction. Mm. But anyway, getting back to that. Um, I, I should <laughs> say, like with the Russian tapestry, which was my book, I got the inspiration from March that she used March and I did the Romanov, the story of Romanov's going oh, through the book. Go. Yeah, and, uh, and I... Um, and I told it from the point of view of the Romanovs, and that's where I got my inspiration from, from reading March. Oh, there we go. So, <laughs> so we're thank all... you, Geraldine. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, Judith loved the book. Um, if you loved Little Women, you'll love this. Do, do you think that's the case? I don't think no, so necessarily. No, I don't think so. no. If you loved Little Women, you will pick this up. Yes. Because you will want to know what happened, and you will be sorely surprised and um, you will learn more but if you're expecting something like Little Women it's a surprise yeah. I, I yeah. know when yeah. I read Little Women I was young and I was mm. Joe when I was yeah. reading it that's who I wanted to be and now that I'm reading March I'm mm. yeah. Um and, and, yeah. and so my perspective is completely different yeah. and I think I think what it does, Little Women, is to get women reading what is otherwise an historical work about the American Civil War. I probably wouldn't have picked it up, mm. uh, but I did because I wanted to know what happened to Mr. March. Mm. Mm. Well, I didn't read um, Little Women, so as I said at the beginning, like I came completely from uh, like a, a blank point of view, but. Um, yeah, I think if I had read The Little Women and had strong feelings towards it, I might have been a little bit prejudiced coming to read March. I think they're two different books in I think they are. That's yeah, why I wouldn't keep them yeah, separate. I, couldn't, yeah. Yeah. I could not compare them. We've got another question. Well, on that topic, uh, Lizzie wanted to know if you'd recommend reading it if you haven't read Little Women. Yes. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. It's a standalone book. We're at the Better Reading Book Club. I've got Suzanne Leal. I'm Cheryl Arkell. And this is Banaf Shesarov, and we're talking about Geraldine Brooks' March. Pulitzer Prize winner. She won the Pulitzer Prize in 2006. We've actually got some limited edition Pulitzer Prize um, bookmarks. They're 100 years old this year, so happy birthday, happy Pulitzer birthday. Prizes. Um, and we've got some more uh, questions here. Well, <clears throat> this is probably not a questions question, but we've got something here from one of our... Um, readers Barbie her name is Barbie she hated it she <laughs> said she loves every other story of Geraldine Brooks she loves them a lot but this one was awful and she felt that it destroyed little women for her but there you go that's just one point of view um, I've got Ida love all of Geraldine Brooks's books March is extra good she said Felicity March is brilliant Carol says that she's a great storyteller, and I agree. She's Absolutely. such a great storyteller. Don't the amount of research she must put into each book um, to get this this accuracy? I mean, I guess did you do the same with yours? Well, I'd like to say yes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, she's a journalist. I mean, the the amount of research that she yeah. would put in. I um, went just to our local library. That's where I got most of my research and ordered a few books. But um, well, yeah, I mean, she um, she actually went to the places. Oh, actually, I did too. I went to Russia and to Iran. So there you oh, go. There you yes, go. Yeah. we're, we're yeah. the same. We're the same. Yeah. Interesting. Is she had um, she based or, or John March is really based on Louisa May Alcott's father. Yes, who was a vegetarian. Yes, yeah, he was a vegetarian. Which I thought was very unusual for the time. Yeah. But he left all these journals, and what a gift yes. for a writer, yeah. what a gift for a journalist and a fiction writer yes. to have the voice in these in these journals. So I suppose what I learned from this, because my um, my book. The teacher's secret is contemporary. I'll hold it up. I'll hold it up, <laughs> it up. I'll hold it up for her. <laughs> I thought it was just so on my lift. I thought that people could maybe see it. Um, but I think historical works are so extraordinary because you have these gems that you can find. And imagine to find the journals yeah. of the man that you want to explore, and then go from there. Mm. Mm. We've got another question. Uh, Bethany says, "What did you think about how the book handles faith and religion?" Yeah, what do we think about that? 
I don't... I, I mean, think I think you terrific, talked thing. about that earlier in terms of he being a chaplain. Um, I don't think that that was something that she delved into it a lot. central I didn't, part yeah, of it, yeah. I didn't think so at all. The faith it, was, but not so much the religious part and the, um, like the belief system of that they were going doing something with it. I think he... I had a tab here, but I can't figure I remember which tab is the one where he says that he makes that great speech about um, uh, sort of going to that damnation land and to sort of um, bring them back into the nation. I'm, probably, I'm getting the whole thing wrong, I know, because I can't find the quote. I think John March was more an abolitionist than he was yes. a religious man. So his religion was mm. um, the cause, so the cause of abolition. And that, I think, comes out with fervour. I don't think it's the story of a man losing faith. No, I, I don't I think either. That he's used as a chaplain, as a yes. vehicle, in order to um, follow the troops into war. But really, what he's interested in is how people should be equal mm. and how the union cause can best be, be um, progressed. Yeah. It says here, I found it says to go forth... Um, one must in all reverence call a damnable land and we must go forth and root out the evil that lies within. So mm. that was his yeah, great speech before he went yeah. off to war. Um, I'm just going to read a couple of passages. If war can ever be said to be just, then this war is so. It is an action for a moral cause with the most rigorous of intellectual underpinnings. And yet everywhere I turn, I see injustice done in the waging of it. And that was on page 65. Do you think that March still believes that war is just by the end of the novel? No. No, I no. don't think so either. No. I think that turning point... But there was no other way, was there? No. No, and that's the study of John Brown, who was mm. one of the main um, proponents of the Union cause, it, shown through his need for violence in order to get to equality, was, I think, very well dealt with. Mm. I mean, he was a... He was a complex man who wasn't simply a good man fighting for a good cause. He was a violent man who met a violent death. And perhaps... But he was a violent man fighting for a good cause. Well, exactly, mm. exactly. Yeah. But I think she brings... Isn't that I think really Geraldine war Brooks brings, in brings up the, mm. the, the contradictions yeah, yeah, in that. Yeah. I don't mm. think, as you say, it's not easy. How do you know how you're going to be until you mm. get there? Mm. And how can it be simply yes, no? Mm. How can it be binary? It's It's... Mm. Complex. It is. It's really complex. We've got another question. Um, Gillian asks, how relevant do you guys feel the themes of this book are for readers today? Oh, very. 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 I mean, like, I mean, as we were talking about war and everything, mm. it's, it, the themes of it, like, when this, this discussed the same themes in World War One, World War Two, and all the wars that are following it, and all the wars that are currently going on now. You know, but I mean, even so at the they, recent wars, yeah, I mean, these, recent wars these soldiers well. would be facing the same dilemmas. Yeah, you know, modern day soldier versus a soldier back then would be facing the, the same dilemma. And also the dislocation, the dislocation of the soldier uh, in situ and the soldier who returns home. Mm. How do you return Gosh, home? Gosh, and I think she did that well. Really well. Didn't she do yeah. that well? With the reunion with the children yeah. and the wife, half of his yeah. mind is still back on the fields yeah. and half is at home. And even that last, the couple of last chap, uh, uh, paragraphs at the end where he's sitting down and he is enjoying his daughters, but he's distracted by mm. the visions of mm, what he's mm, seeing. Mm, mm. And I thought every man. soldier, and yeah, he is a changed man, and I think every soldier must must leave that and mommy had, had said that as well when she saw him and uh, went to the hospital in washington she said that all these boys go and they 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 mm. don't think about what they're leaving behind and what we get in return are these maimed and uh, like they're no longer whole when they come back mm. to us so you know forever they're mm. broken mm. All right, I'm going, I'm going to read something from page 207. Are uh, any two words in all of the English lang language more closely twined than courage and cowardice? Mm. How does this relate to March as a character? Mm. Well, I think March sees himself as a coward uh, and yet he's mm. taken courage uh, by being part of this cause. So I think he's a courageous man who is shocked and frozen by fear 
into seeing himself as a coward. Mm -hmm. So I think it's that earlier point I made where he's a man with great expectations of himself, so great that they can't be met mm -hmm. and they need to be pulled down by his wife, who's mm -hmm. the pragmatist. Do you know, and that brings me to the point, he was a lot older than the other soldiers, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah he and I wonder whether his suffering when he came back is is worse in a sense because when you're older you probably those I don't know I oh, mean I think those... they're younger ones as well like I mean, they're, they're cut, yeah, yeah their lives are all awful. cut short awful. oh yeah yeah and they and don't the have the maturity yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean yeah, I keep yeah. thinking like I've got a 21 year old and 17 year old and I think they would have gone to the war and they're still children do you yeah, know they how do you how do you handle that as a child no. and he was going to the war through the eyes of a husband and a father mm. and a teacher mm. so he felt such a sense of protection of those younger boys mm. and uh, th all the younger people that he encountered so I yeah. think his sense of responsibility given his age may have been greater mm. Mm. This is, um, I've taken this from page 162, and this is Marmy. You stifle me, you crush me, you preach emancipation, mm. and yet you enslave me in the most fundamental way. Am I not to have the freedom to express myself in my own home? In the face of such an insult, you call your girls little women. Well, I am your belittled woman, and I am tired of oh, it. Go, oh, go, wow. go, 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 go. <laughs> I, look, you know, I... I I completely understood where she was coming from. Mm -hmm. However, I did think that he probably had a greater empathy mm -hmm. to women than a lot of men around that time. Oh, look, I, I, I think that's true. Yeah. But it was a difficult time. It was, it was a, a really difficult hard time. time. And you see a woman who's so feisty and so clever and yeah. so capable, who's, like you say, stifled. Yeah. Mm. Oh, she was ahead of her time. She, she wasn't was, she? Yeah, she, she was a joke. That's what was so wonderful yeah, for me. Yeah. Mommy in March is Jo. And I, she's not just a mother, she's Jo. Mm. She's a woman. Mm. She's She became fully rounded. Yeah, yeah. She's smart. She's a thinker. Have we got questions? Uh, Stephanie says, Geraldine Brooks creates an extraordinary sense of place in all her books. She wants to know, do you guys have a favourite work by her? Is it March? Hmm. Oh, Year of Wonders blew me away. I was just... Caleb's Crossing, <laughs> by far. Loved it. I think this one. I enjoyed oh, you think Caleb's March? Crossing okay. and, and Year of Wonders was my first one. But, you know, I was a little woman girl, a little oh, woman girl, oh, and yeah. um, she let me grow up and still love little women mm. with uh, March. Well, there you go. Well, um, I think that might be it. We don't have any more questions. Young Beth? Okay. Well, this is it. This was some um, book club, Better Reading Book Club. Thank you to Suzanne Leal. Thank, Thank you, you to Benafshe Sarov for joining me tonight. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. I think it was a great lively conversation. So thank you, <laughs> ladies. Um, if you've read this book, I'm sure that you've shared your opinion with us. But if you haven't read this book, even after this discussion, do yourself a favour and go and read it. It really is so worth it. And as I said, we've got these lovely bookmarks to give away. So we will select 10 of the uh, comments or questions that have come through and we'll send these out. Thank you so much. Uh, and we will see you next time. But before we go, I need to announce next month's book. Ah, I nearly forgot. And Patched, Commonwealth. This is going to be the discussion book for next month. And what date is that, Beth, next month? I've the forgotten. 28th of September. 28th of September, Wednesday, the 28th of September at 8 p.m. And we will be discussing Commonwealth by Anne Patchett. Anyone read it yet? No, not yet. I have read it. It's wonderful. You'll <laughs> love it too. Okay, see you next time. Bye. Bye.